when I was just getting started with photography and more specifically trying to go full time, getting paid for photography, one of the first things I noticed as being extremely annoying and actually quite intimidating was keeping myself organized um, and culling through the photos to find which ones I wanted and backing everything up. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Hello friends, I hope that you're having a happy day. And in today's video, I'm going to show you my full post photo shoot process from start to finish. So we'll go over um, dumping the card onto your computer or hard drive, um, culling through the photos and filtering for the ones that you want, pulling them into Lightroom, exporting them, um, and then kind of having a hierarchy of folders to keep all of that really organized. Um, and then all the way through to the way that I prefer to deliver photos to a client. So let's get into it. So I shoot on the Canon R6, which I'm using right now, and that has two SD card slots. And so um, when you have a card in both of those slots, there are different ways that you can actually have the camera saving your footage and your photos onto those cards. Um, you can have it record redundantly, which is uh, saving all of your photos and videos identically to both cards. And if you're shooting weddings or a paid gig of some kind or just something that you're really paranoid about potentially losing, this seems like the way to go and it's not actually how I've been shooting up to this point. Um, you can also separate it to have photos saved to one card and videos saved to the other. Um, you can do what I've been doing, which is just have it save all photos and videos starting at the beginning of one card, fill that one up and then spill over to the other. Um, and I don't think that I'm going to do that because I shoot on 128 gig cards and I think it's smartest to be dumping your cards and organizing all your files after every single shoot. Um, a, I like knowing that my cards are empty so that if I need to pick up my camera and go, I don't ever have to worry about running into the dreaded memory card full notification. Um, but also it's just a lot easier and faster when you're organizing one batch of photos as opposed to going through the last month of photos and trying to organize all of that. So um, I wanted to just mention that like, if you have the capability and you have two card slots, um, it probably makes the most sense to record redundantly to both cards just so that you don't lose anything. Um, I shoot with 128 gig cards and I think that in one shoot, in one day, you're not gonna fill up 128 gigs, even shooting raw. So uh, that's the way, that's my setup and that's how I do things. Moving on, you've got a full SD card, you're back at your computer and it's time to get into things. So let's switch over to the computer and I'll show you my workflow. So after you slide that card into your card reader, come over here and open up Adobe Bridge. Now, there's a handful of reasons that I strongly suggest using Adobe Bridge when going through things. Um, originally, for me, it was because when I got the R6, my old MacBook and even the Mac Mini couldn't read the CR3 files, which are the raw files that it shoots. Um, and it couldn't give me previews. And so I needed to use Adobe Bridge if I wanted to be able to preview all of the files and know what I was organizing. Um, another reason is that the filter panel down here, uh, if you can't see filter panel right here, which you can, just come up to window, hit filter panel, and that's where it'll be. Um, the options available here will change depending on the folder that you're in. So right now you're not seeing a filter for rating, and that's because we're just seeing a bunch of folders, none of which have ratings. We'll talk about why I use Adobe Bridge kind of as we go, but there's multiple reasons, and I'm sure I'll mention it again, that I strongly suggest organizing your files using Adobe Bridge. Okay, so in Adobe Bridge, just go to computer, you'll see your main hard drive, any externals, and then your SD cards. Before you even go touch the SD card, go into your hard drive, go into, you know, let's just say this is where all of your other folders are. Um, I have a photo, I have a folder for paid shoots. In that folder, I would have the name of the shoot. So let's say I just did a couple's photo for Allie and Aaron. Um, or Ali and Aaron, Ali and Jeff. We'll say Ali and Jeff. <laughs> um, so I'll just do like Ali and Jeff. Inside that folder, I'll create one for raw photos and one for edited 
photos. Now, if this is a folder that you're creating not as a paid gig um, and it's a vacation or something, I would do uh, a, a slightly different workflow. I would have a folder for video. I would sort it by the camera that I was shooting on, things like that. But for this purpose, we're gonna say it's a couple's photo shoot for Ali and Jeff. And so we've created the folder for the photo shoot. Um, and then we've also created uh, two folders for edited and raw photos. So now you can go back to computer, open up that SD card, get to the photos that you're shooting. And for this example, I just have some miscellaneous stuff in here. But if you had done what I said, which was um, start with a clean card, you would be able to just go in here and hit command all. But for this example, we're just gonna say that these city photos here are the couple that I shot. And um, I want to double click and move to and this is why we created those other folders first is because this is going to remember the last like 10 recent folders and so when you hover on move to you're going to see ali and jeff and then right above that indicating that it's more recent you'll see raw photos so we're going to move to the from the sd card to that raw photos folder that we created takes a couple of seconds and then Back to computer, into your hard drive, page shoots, Ali and Jeff, raw photos, boom. Now, this is, again, where using Adobe Bridge really, really comes in handy. I know that when I would do this from an SD card and I would just uh, open the Finder, even when I could preview my files, you would m organize everything, move it onto a hard drive, and delete them off of the card using the Finder, and then it would look empty, but you'd throw the card back in your camera, and it would still show memory card full. You'd have to format it. Kind of annoying. Um, that move to function actually makes it so that it's not copying the files, because if you just click and drag, like if you open two windows and just click and drag, it copies the files from the SD card to the hard drive, and then you have to delete them all off of the SD card, which moves them to your trash, and then you have to empty the trash, and that just clogs up the RAM and storage on your computer, and I've only had this Mac Mini for a couple of months, so I've been doing everything on my 2014 MacBook, and it can hardly have more than one application open. So doing all that, I, I mean, I was just always trying to solve for um, anything that's gonna clog up the RAM or take up storage or anything like that. So that move to function is insanely helpful. The next couple of steps are also major reasons to be doing this in Adobe Bridge. So now that I am in that folder of the raw photos, I would imagine if your photo shoot, you know, you would have hundreds probably. So what I do is I take my right hand and I put it on the arrows of the keyboard. And then I put my left hand on the five up top above all the letters and everything. And then my right hand that's using the arrows, I actually set my pinky on this zero over here. And the reason for that is as we're going through, if I see which photo I want, I'm gonna hit five, which as you can see up here and down here gives it a five star rating. And then that also creates a category under this filter panel for five star ratings. And so that's the workflow for going through and deciding which ones you want to keep. Um, you can open and close this to make the uh, preview bigger or smaller, doesn't really matter. But yeah, so just using the arrows, go through here. I like that one, five. I like that one, five. Let's say I want this city shot and I like that one and I like that one and then I like that one. But um, I've decided that I actually only like this first one because it seems more centered. And so I, I want to unselect these ones. You just hit the zero to take away that rating. So after you've gone through and you've hit five uh, to give a five-star rating to the photos that you want to keep, you just come down here to the filter panel, hit that five-star rating, and now only the ones you've selected show up. It's now where you can just hit Command A, select them all, and drag them all into Lightroom. Lightroom also has organization features, like from this screen, you can add them to an album and stuff like that, but uh, Lightroom libraries actually really, really take up a bunch of storage on the machine, and so that's why I back up everything to an external, and then when I'm done editing a batch of photos, I delete them out of Lightroom. You'll see this screen, and you're just gonna hit add six photos for those six photos that you just uploaded. So once you're in Lightroom, um, edit as you normally would. Let's just say, uh, apply a preset, whatever you want to do, travel. Let, okay, let's call that one good. Looks a little teal and orange, cinematic, whatever. Um, 
after you've edited them, this is how I export. Now, this example is less for a couple shoot and more so if you're shooting reoccurring work for products or something like that. My example is the watch company, Vittoria, that I shoot for. Um, I've been shooting content and delivering batches twice a month for them for over a year. And they have a log of all the photos that I've shot just starting at number one all the way through however many we're at now. And so in order for me to do a bunch of different batches and just continue that naming convention um, so that they're easily searchable and they can create a list of which photos they want posted with their marketing partners and things like that is a lot of the times, if it's just a photo for me that I'm gonna put on Instagram, I'll just do this 90% uh, quality JPEG small. Um, but for the example I just mentioned, I'll go into custom settings Again, it stays the same, JPEG, small, 90% quality, but you open this more options here, and I would, for them, do Victoria, and then start at the number, whatever we're at, 2058 or something like that. And then you see here this example, this is now gonna save as Victoria 1058, or Victoria dash 1058, 1059, 1060, and it will go up from there. And so, that's how to customize the naming convention for how you want these photos to save when you're exporting from Lightroom. So uh, let's export these six photos into that um, example that we showed earlier. Um, paid shoots, Allie and Jeff, edited photos. This is why we already had all the folders ready to go. Hit export. It'll take just a couple of minutes, minutes, seconds. Once that's done exporting, I will close Lightroom. Let's close Adobe Bridge. For companies that you're working for regularly, like for me, Vittoria, um, we have a folder that's a Google Drive folder where I put everything. Um, but for couples shoots, like the mini sessions that I recently did, I prefer to deliver photos with WeTransfer. And so when you're on the home screen after you've logged in, or I think you might even be able to do it without logging in, I'm not sure on that though. Uh, you just put in their email. So client at michaelcolitis.com. That's not a real email. Um, photo shoot. And then add a little message. Thank you so much. Hope you love these as much as me. And then what you do is you just open up the finder, go back to that page shoots, Allie and Jeff, edited photos, command A, hold shift and drag all these onto the screen and then they all upload and then hit transfer. And it can take a long time if you're sending a hundred photos or something like that, but I like it because like I said, then I've already got it saved on my hard drive. It gives them a link that they can download from. You actually get notified when they download their files and then uh, I don't have to worry about it anymore. So this is the point where if I needed to drop a couple to my phone so that I can post to Instagram um, or if I want to airdrop a couple to my phone so that I can send them my favorite two or three and let them know that their photos are coming. Um, in this photo that we've already created, you know, pick your favorite two or three and just hit airdrop, drop it right to your phone. So there it is, that's my entire post photo shoot workflow. I feel like I zoomed through it kind of, but A, I just get worked up when I'm talking about stuff that excites me, um, and B, I didn't want this to be a super long video when it's just a couple of steps, but um, I was sitting here working on a photo shoot anyway, and I feel really good about my process, and so I just thought that I'd share with you. So. Um, if you have any suggestions or if you feel like there are inefficiencies in the way that I do things, um, feel free to comment below and let me know. If you um, found this helpful and you think that you're actually going to implement the way that I do things, um, also let me know. Yeah, just start a conversation down in the comments. I'll be, I'll be in there hanging out and responding to people. So uh, yeah, that's the video. Um, if you found this helpful, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. It actually really, really helps. If you're not subscribed already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And uh, I appreciate you guys. I love you so much. Thanks for being here. See you in the next one.